Hello everyone, Rissy Toothpick here, back again with some more Sherlock Holmes. And last time we did the mission, I believe it was called the Gilded Cage. And we came with our own guess on who committed the murder. Apparently, we might have chose wrong. It was probably the, uh, not uh, Paul, but the other one. But you know, it is what it is. You know, that that's uh, there's really no proof. It's just that you get more out of choosing him. Other than that, the evidence against both individuals is pretty much there. Both of them have the same wounds. Both of them have darts, you know. But yeah, but now let's go look at the items belonging to our family, apparently. My dear Theodore, you know I value our friendship more than most other bonds. We share the same restless soul, and your acceptance and support in trying times has been a blessing. I'm endlessly grateful for the turn of fate that saw Seeger and I join the same expedition as you. It changed my life for the better. Nevertheless, I'm, I am not blind, nor a hypocrite. I know that your feelings towards me have deepened. Forgive me, Theodore. But I do not feel as you do. I must spare you the pain of one-sided love before it is too late. Please see enclosed the necklace you so thoughtfully gifted in remembrance of our adventure together. I cannot in good conscience continue to wear it. I know this letter will cause you such hurt, and for that I cannot I can put I can but apologize deeply, yet my heart is with Seeger, who is still unaware of your desires. If this sees the end of our friendship, I will understand, but I truly hope we can continue to share the conversations, collaborations, and kindnesses that have brought me such joy all these years. You respectfully, Violet. Alrighty, and then let's check this one out. Okay, hold on. My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. If she was oh. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? Already. It looks like she might have chose the wrong lover. This Seeger guy. You know, between the two, she might have she should have probably got with the elephant guy. Because we know he ain't no murderer. But okay, let's see what we have here. So the letter. Oh yeah, here we go. Fragmented memory. Another memory is coming back to me. I saw someone hand hide a key in the in a pocket in a closing door with a woman's silhouette behind it. The door was somewhere on the first floor, and I believe there was a memory nearby. Okay. So we can go back to the house, and we can kind of check it out. And we might be able to uh, look at the new things that we bought for the, the house and stuff. Garden's much prettier, don't you think? I bet the memories are all flooding back now. Also, we have the swing set, the elephant from that uh, the case. It's pretty neat. Nothing really good over here, though. Okay, we know wherever the memory... Well done, Sherry. The hall now looks much as it did in our youth. Brings back fond memories. Oh yeah, we, we bought all this stuff. You know, I envy you, Sherry. You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. Okay, it says in the first floor, but... It really doesn't look like it, right? Is that what it said? Yeah, the, on the first floor. Uh, 
And you have to have enough space where there's like a, a mirror. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Let me see here. Is there anything? Not really. What's this though? Hey, this is the luggage we brought from London, isn't it? Let me come up here though, because look, this is the door. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Yeah, okay, so this is the uh, the memory. So why did it tell us it's on the first floor? I mean, it's like... I mean, I get... Maybe? I don't know. It's weird. Let me see if I can get this here. I had a surprise for my mother. Oh, we found... We had something fancy. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather... Quite a, you had a shovel with you, John. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona and were eager to show my mother right away. Okay. So now what else do we need, though? Guess maybe we're closer? For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. Interesting. Okay, so is there anything else here? We put it on the side. Okay, so I guess what we can do is we can go downstairs. Oh, here we go. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Oh. Yes. It came from upstairs. Did someone hit the vase or whatever? The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor. And your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Interesting, and it looks like we can go in there now. Why would he smash their, their vase, though? Sherlock's mother often mentioned her fascination with the ancient Greek ruins located on Cordona. One day we decided to surprise her, so took a shovel to the ruins and uncovered a nearly intact Greek vase. We wanted to show her what we found immediately. For some reason, the door to Mrs. Holmes' room was closed when we returned. We knocked, but nobody answered, so we left the vase near the door and retreated downstairs. Jerry wanted to get some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the artifact. At last, it was not to be, as the manor echoed with the sound of shattering ceramic. We scurried upstairs to discover the vase broken, shards scattered all over the floor. Otto Richard, Richter was standing there with the door open. He was very angry with us. Dr. Richter told us to never disturb Sherlock's mother when the door is closed. He claimed that she broke our vase in an outburst, but we didn't believe him. I bet he was the one who broke it. Yeah, if she likes Greek stuff. Okay, so it looks like we can do that one. I spent my childhood in Stonewood Manor, and I am and am starting to remember flashes of my time here. The house is now abandoned, but restoring the rooms to how they were may bring the memories back to life. My mind palace seems to have seeped into the real world and is preventing access to some rooms. I think I'll be able to get inside if I can remember more. John proposed that we find our bedroom. I think it was somewhere upstairs. I managed to, yeah. So we've already read this one, but the, I managed to access my mother's room. What memories will I uncover there? So let's get in here and the figure it out. things are still here. Presumably Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality.
Alrighty. Give me one second. Sorry about that, guys. I had a phone call. And let us investigate our mother's room here. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. Damn, the doctor was just uh, throwing things at everything. Look what I found. The White King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? Oh, no. John dares me to play chess with him. The White King is under attack. I need to save him and checkmate the opponent in one turn. I don't know how to play chess. Like, let me just make it simple here. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. Save the king by retreating. Defend the king with the bishop. But then that opens up the bishop, doesn't it? Let's do sure, that. Sure, you saved the king, but that's no checkmate, Sherry. You're losing your touch. Oh. Damn. Well, you know, I gotta be honest. I'm not. I'm not no chess player, so uh, it was. I'm not like too surprised. My mother loved flowers. They made her smile. I remember we would bring a new bouquet every week to make her a bit happier. That's why we collected all the violet flowers we could find on the island. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. This is a nasty like. Table need to be cleaned. London, August 21st, Siger Holmes obituary in the Times. Mr. Siger Moreland Holmes, the renowned archaeologist, authenticator, and historian, is dead. A mere 41 years of age, he was seized by a cardiac event during the opera at the Covent Garden Theater on Saturday. Despite a physician's best effort, he remained insensible and died at 20 minutes past 6 o'clock last evening. His sudden end came as a severe shock to his large circle of acquaintances. Mr. Holmes is survived his, is survived his by, by his wife, that's weird, Violet, and two sons, Mycroft 16 and Sherlock 6. Funeral services will be held Wednesday at the Highgate Cemetery of St. James by Rev. W.E. Stanley. It's a strange feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. I'm sorry. It's weird that his father died. Maybe the their doctor, maybe they had like a family doctor and he like killed both of their parents. An old sheet of paper, March 25th, 1869, examination notes of Dr. Otto Richter. Over the last few months, I have asked Mrs. Holmes to sketch some landscapes. The first few were clear and accurate, but subsequent drawings quickly drifted away from reality. It appears her disease progresses rapidly and perhaps even affects her vision. I may need to consider trepanation? Okay. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. See what's in here? Okay, so we have some items in here that we can look at. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. You gotta remember, back in the day, medicine <laughs> was pretty violent, or it could get pretty violent. It could, like, feed your uh, sick friends poison to cure them, which, you know, means death. Obser observations of Mrs. Violet Holmes, Dr. Otto Richter, 19th of May, 1868. Initial consultation revealed the patient suffers sleep problems, periods of anxiety, and slight confusion of memories prescribed a strong sedative to be administered daily and will continue to monitor symptoms. Sedation has helped minimize anxiety attacks, but Mrs. Holmes now experiences catatonia, apathy, apathy, and prolonged dep depressive states. Moreover, the patient's confusion has worsened and she has begun writing letters to her deceased husband as if he were alive. 
and had prescribed six further drugs to balance her mental state and weekly hydrotherapy. The current drug regimen has delivered middling results with confusion worsening into near constant delusion. The patient grows aggravated when these beliefs are contradicted, prompting aggressive behavior. I have now witnessed several episodes of violence against her own family and towards herself. Consequently, I ordered that bars be installed on the windows and that Mrs. Holmes be strapped to her bed at night. The dosage of all medication has been raised. I have prescribed the patient additional hypo hypnotherapy sessions as well as some mild hallucinogens. Interesting. I mean, we really, you know, what were the symptoms on medicine back then? You know, they didn't like study it, so this stuff could have been killing her. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. Can we get in there, maybe? There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. Okay, so maybe we can check out what that is. Straps on the bed. It just doesn't look right. Potassium bromide. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily, not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily, not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. I shouldn't even have read it. One of three. What else are we missing? Here we go. Another letter. My gentle Siger. Alas, I am still yet to receive any correspondence from you. One presumes my previous letters are chasing you around the continent as you travel. I hope you are in good health and are ready on your way home. Forgive me my impatience, but life without your kind voice and bright eyes is scarcely worth living. The boys need their father around too. I can tell that they miss you. Though, as you well know, Mycroft is not one to wear his heart on his sleeve. In case my prior letters have been lost, know that we have relocated to Cordona. Please come back soon. Forever yours, Violet. February 1869. Waiting for the husband that's dead. Oh, it brings back some memories. Kind of sad. Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. Oh, we could actually hear... Oh. That doesn't sound good. Let's see what we got down here. Piece of paper. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868. Okay. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. Yeah, so we're seeing her progression. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. That's yeah, kind of sad. Okay, so now we've done all that. Okay, let's see here. There's another memory we can look at, but let's try to do this chemical analysis on the bottle. And then we'll look into that memory. So a three and a four. Okay, let me look for the negatives here. All I see is this one negative. There's only one of them. How are we going to get a negative four out of that?
Huh. See the negative fives. Really, there's only one blue that's a negative. How... This, maybe? Turns a positive into a negative. Interesting. So now we even have that. So what we need to do now is find a four blue. If we link them, we get a negative four. That's pretty cool. And we get that negative four and the three. There we go. Analysis identify the substance as a hallucinogen derived from mushrooms. Okay, so now I guess we can do the morning mania. Let's start from, I guess, like over here. The broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to change his suit as the one he was wearing was completely stained. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. I wonder what made her angry. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. Oh, here we go. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, that's weird. Oh, did the doctor maybe attack him? I, I really prefer that one more. Do something like that. See what that does. I don't believe you, liars. Get away from me. It's not true. It's not real. What? Oh. Everything will be okay, Sherry. I promise. Damn, I got on the first try. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. The 9th of April started off badly. My mother was anxious, then hysterical. She threw food and shouted at the doctor, calling him a liar. John and I brought her morning tea, but when the shouts started, I became scared. The only thing I could think of, think to do was hide near the bed and wait for everything to pass. Thankfully, John was there to protect me and calm me down. My, my mother... She she was not just ill, but bad. God have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. John, every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. No, but can we at least leave it for another day? Why wait another day? I mean, I know we're going to lose him, but I mean, you would think Sherlock Holmes, he really wants to know what happened to his mother. He ain't going to stop. It cannot wait. Let us find another door and finally learn the truth. That's pointless, Sherry. To date, you have had no control over the return of these memories. It is all triggered by your work elsewhere on Cordona. You must accept that this will have to wait. Are you all right? 
Uh, I mean, nothing really major just happened. He's kind of like remembering everything. But then again, learning that his mother was mad, he'd probably be sad. It feels wrong, sad. Like they're the memories of another man. I'm struggling to reconcile my love for my mother with the reality of who she was. And worse, what possessed Mycroft to lie about it? There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait, did you hear that? Yes. Metallic souls. What is this sailor doing here? Alrighty, man, he knows whose it is without them, you know, without even leaving the room. Yeah, obituary. Knocking at the door. Wasn't expecting visitors, and looks like we have some things here, so. My mother's struggle with mental disease could well be hereditary and affect my mind and rationality. Interesting. I don't think there's anything else here. No, we're good. So I've gotten everything in the yard and in the main hall. Looks like though there might still be some things we're missing at the local traders that we can buy. First, before then, let's go figure out who knocking at the door. Why does it tell me that though? Oh, hold on. Sherlock Holmes, isn't it? I was looking for you. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You can call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose. You're a fast learner, sir. It's weird that he has, like, pink on him. Pink paint in hair, painted recently. Weird. Old and shabby. No signs of hard physical work, even though he looks like a sailor. Hiding something square shaped. Sailor came to my house declaring that he was a my new game. His hands showed no signs of regular physical activity, nor corns, nor rough skin, but owing to the fact he had an old worn uniform, I assumed he was still in service. No. No matter what you are, if you're like in a job for like a long period of time and your hands get rough, it's very difficult for you to come back from that. You're always going to have them calluses. Your hands are always going to look like you were in that work. So him having such good hands, he's an artist, no doubt about it. Okay, so a man dressed as a sailor came to my house declaring that he was my new game. A drop of pink paint in his hair betrayed him as a man who was involved in the art sphere. His hands show no signs of regular physical activity, no corns, none of that rough skin, which is odd with the outfit he's wearing. Few artists know my name or where I live, so Vogel best fits the role of the game master. Considering the tiny square-shaped object in the fake seller's pocket, I had deduced he was employed at Vogel's art gallery, and the real reason for his visit was to pass me an image imitation. There we go. I cannot believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favorite part of any conversation. Hands without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist? I would suggest, rather, a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. 
Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so, if you win this little game. Farewell. Alrighty, my dear Sherlock Holmes, as you no doubt have already guessed, I would like to invite you to experience my art exhibition, not only for the purpose of the contemplation of beauty, but in more general need of your genius. You will find the gallery at the Caravanseria, at the crossroads of B Bazaar Road in Herms Avenue in Old City. Always your friend, VV. Alright, the muse from abroad. Interesting. So, it's in the old city, which is over here. It is between Bizarre Road, the crossroads of Bizarre Road and Herms Avenue. Okay, so let's try. Okay, so we found the Bizarre Ro Road and Herms Avenue, so it should be... Yeah, let's do that. Let's fast travel. I wonder if we need to wear anything special for this, but I mean, if he's assuming that we're going to be there, it shouldn't be a problem. Of course, we are about at the 30 minute mark, so I'm going to stop here today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links below. In the next one, we're going to figure out what's going on here. And we might even stop here to buy some furniture for our home.